إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد أيها المسلمون This week many of us saw a violation and a breach of the boundaries of Allah Jalla wa ala in that ban that they tried to uphold or that they upheld rather in a school in London where they banned Muslim pupils of which made 50% of the school students banned them from praying the salah and it begs the question that what happened all of a sudden to the 1996 Education Act or to the Human Rights Act of 1998 to enforce the rights of a child that they can express their religious identity and practice their religion and that they have the right to exercise their religious beliefs and practices. What all of a sudden happened to this? What harm do young pupils choosing to pray during their free time what harm does it bring to the school or to other pupils? And we are told that the school is, ob is, is under obligation to consider the religious values and faith of the children. Yet here, 50% of their children, their values and faith have been completely disregarded. And that they have certain protected characteristics that are enshrined that nobody can touch. And from them is the child's faith and religion. How can you claim to be considerate of our values and our religion when our messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ra'su al-amr al-islam wa amuduhu as-salah the head of the matter is islam for us and the salah is its main and fundamental pillar they attempt then to try to downplay this great pillar of al-islam and they want to claim that they know our religion better than us garnering support from munafiqin and zanadiqa from hypocrites and, heret and heretics to say that the Muslim pupils they don't need to pray on the school they don't need to pray on time they can make up for it afterwards lying about our religion when Allah told us in the Quran and a scholarly consensus that we've had in the last 1400 years <laughs> that verily performing prayers is a duty on the believers at appointed and fixed times do not claim to accommodate for Muslim pupils and in the same breath you seek to snatch our children's rights of demonstrating and practicing a core symbol and pillar of this faith which is the Salah which Rasulullah said The covenant that is between us and them it is the prayer, it is Salah whoever abandons the prayer then they have disbelieved this is how we value a Salah in our religion that it is what makes or breaks your religion. It is what makes you a Muslim or takes you out of an Islam. As salah. It is the main and the core pillar and symbol of an Islam. And we as Muslims, we can never compromise on the pillar of an Islam, on not, none of the pillars or the tenets of an Islam. Salah is the pillar of this religion and it will remain so up until Allah ends this world and we return to Him. Salah will remain in despite of the efforts of the enemies of Islam, it will remain the pillar of Islam. It will remain the symbol that we will demonstrate as Muslims. And up and down the country, we find it very strange that there are schools that are looking to facilitate for gender neutral toilets. Yet, God forbid that we allow a child five minutes of his lunchtime or playtime so that he can pray. In a, in a way that will prove that he will have the last two lessons where he'll be at ease and he'll be in a good mental state as shown in their own modern research and, and, and their surveys and statistics. The child will be at ease. The child will be mentally stable if he is able to perform his prayer. And also we see the schools now emphasizing and putting great, a deal of emphasis on the importance of the child expressing themselves and identifying as they please. To the extent that we even seen children identifying as cats and cows and that goes unchallenged. But again, God forbid that we allow a child, a Muslim child, 
to fulfill their obligation of prayer. Because that is going to be complete disaster for the school. That's going to be a complete disaster on the pupils and in the school as a whole. It's very strange that the school today are rife with mental health problems. Students suffering from anxiety, a lack of communal support, a lack of moral guidance, many social problems that schools are admitting that they are struggling to tackle today. And if we look at just a few of the statistics, the Mental Health of Children and Young People Association in England, they did a report in 2023, just last year, which was published by NHS England. They said one in five children, one in five children in England from between the ages of five to 16, they had a probable uh, mental disorder. This was in 2023, going up from one in nine in, back in 2017. You can see that there's an increase in mental health issues and mental, uh, mental disorders amongst young children, age five to 16, school age children. And in 2021, the Mind UK, they did a survey to show that secondary schools in particular, they are struggling to meet the needs of young people when it comes to health problems. A staggering 96% stated that mental health affected their schoolwork at some point. 96% of students in, in secondary schools today. 78% said that the school made their mental health worse. A logical, rational mind, not even a religious mind, a logical, rational mind would come to the conclusion that the school needs to facilitate for activities that would help to combat these issues. And look at what Allah says in the Quran. Surely in the remembrance of Allah do the high, to the hearts find comfort. And also Allah says in the Quran, And establish the prayer. The salah will deter someone from indecency and wickedness and all types of evil. And what some of the research that has been done, modern research, which is also collected in the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine, they did research on salah, on what salah has on the mental and the physical state of a person that, that is engaged in salah. And they came with the results that it helps to promote relaxation, minimize anxiety that they're suffering from in school and reduce cardiovascular risk. These are things, some of the benefits that they have proven from research in, from Salah. Something that they want to ban in school when they're suffering at the same time from all types of mental health issues. And just to mention here, some of the issues that Salah, we believe, tackles, not only in schools, but in society at large. Why Allah has ordained for mankind to pray this five times a day. There are many benefits that are even further to society. And I'm not going to focus on the greater benefits and that is the, the benefit of Tawheed, the benefit of worship of Allah Jalla wa ala. But because this issue, they want to say that it's affecting communities and they want to claim that it's affecting Muslim pupils. I want to challenge them on this and show them that the research shows otherwise. Number one, psychological benefits. Salah can help reduce the levels of stress in students. And this is something that even teachers have recognized that when the students were able to pray in the last two lessons, rather than being rowdy and being uh, loud, then they would be a lot more relaxed. They would be a lot more focused. The students can, can also, uh, 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 through Salah, manage their anxiety levels. They can foster a sense of peace and comfort. The Salah can help the young people to develop resilience Again, something that we're, we're lacking in the school society, unable to be resilient to the challenges of life and to the stresses of life, even though they're just in school. And Salah will help them to overcome this through to granting them the peace and comfort that they need in their, in their day. The second point are the emotional benefits of Salah. Salah can contribute to the overall emotional well-being by promoting the feelings of hope and gratitude and compassion. All of these things that a person feels when he establishes the Salah. And Salah provides a stronger sense of purpose. We as Muslims, we pray the Salah because of our greater purpose. The purpose that we are here to worship Allah Jalla wa ala. And this is what helps the child to overcome all mental challenges. Many children as well that are facing suicidal thoughts because of a lack of, they have this existential crisis. Why am I here? They don't understand. They live just because they want to find a girlfriend. They live because they want to maybe earn some money or they want to try some drugs and all these different things. But when they pray their salah, they understand their true purpose in this life and it gives them the tools that they need so that they can be resilient to all the challenges that they face in life. 
And the third thing which they claim is the social impact of Salah. And rather we see the social benefits of Salah. How Salah strengthens the bond between students. Rather than having your students fighting in the playground, you would have them standing together shoulder to shoulder, ankle to ankle, praying side by side. Yet you would rather have them in the playground fighting and swearing at each other. As we know what happens. Don't try to put a blanket and say that your school is uh, excellent in this and that. Every child goes through this stage. And the other thing that, that Salah will develop is the child's moral compass and their guidance, deterring them from, from violating others and the environment. When a child finishes praying his Salah, he will think twice about violating the rights of others or violating the rights of the schools. It will help him to have a better understanding of his moral guidance and compass. Something that again is deeply lacking in society today. And the fourth and last point is the educational benefits. The one that they really say is, again, the, the, the school is supposed to be built for. For furthering education and for furthering learning. Yet the Salah again shows that an improved focus and discipline potentially translates into other areas. When a person prays the Salah, when a person has as a form of meditation according to their own research, it includes their ability to have focus and discipline even in academic study, fostering greater concentration and self-regulation. And if you look at some of these weak and baseless arguments that they try to bring about the Salah, to say that the Salah is an intrusive practice, what a preposterous accusation against the greatest ibadah that Allah has ordained upon us. How can you spew this nonsense just to try to demonize our greatest symbol of Islam and that what they want to do is just to feed with this Islamophobia that we've been seeing in these last few months. Firstly, the Sharia, it forbids you from praying in hallways and corridors. So the Muslims should seek to, to stay away from doing things like this. But just because of a minority may do something like that, that does not mean that Salah is all, has become something intrusive. Most of the times you will see Muslim students or pupils finding an empty classroom to pray there or the corner of a playground, not inside corridors or in, or in the pathways. And even if they do, then they should be guided. They should be guided to know that the Sharia does not allow them to do so. So the Salah is not intrusive. It is not something that is meant to harm other people in, their, in, their, in, in their, uh, them crossing or, or going by with their day-to-day -day things. And the second claim that is ridiculous is that they say that the Salah is being used to intimidate and influence others. And I really want to challenge this claim. This absurd and hypocritical claim that they bring about our Salah. Because a few people might say, come brother, why don't you come and pray Salah with us today? Maybe that student was about to run into the playground and, and have a fight or start to go and, and cause some problems. And rather he's being told, come, pray the Salah. And that's, that troubled student will perhaps come and feel at ease and be calmed down and deal with a lot of mental issues that he's, he's trying to cope with. But they want to make these claims and I want to put it back on them. The onus goes back onto you. You say that when we call people to Salah, and we tell, encourage people to pray Salah, as we will continue to do, regardless of what you say about us. Yet when you want to come and tell our children that they can identify however they want, cause them mental and physical disorders by telling them these things, or you want to come and tell our daughters that you can dress however you want, and if you don't meet a certain criteria in your weight or in the way that you look, then you are not beautiful and cause eating disorders cause mental disorders in our daughters, then this is fine. This is no problem. This is not intimidation. This is not influencing them in the wrong way. This is all okay to you. Why? Because it's your secular religion that you're promoting. But the minute that we, when we promote things like Allah told us to, where we don't go and force people, and we do what Allah said, ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah wal mawidat al hasana wa jadilhum billatihi ahsan. To invite everyone, every single one of you, we invite you to the way of Allah with wisdom and with kind advice. This is the command from our Lord and that we debate with you in a way that is best. We don't argue and we don't become abusive in our language. Rather, we are kind and respectful and we call people to the way of Allah in such a manner. This is the problem that you have with. And then it, it leads us to, to then question, is your secular religion that you have established, is it so weak and baseless? Is it so weak and baseless that the beauty of Islam is a threat to it, that you have to try and cancel the symbols and the practices of Islam because it's a threat to your way of life? Is that how weak and baseless your way of life is? Whereas when it comes to us Muslims, then we have to accept 
We have to tolerate everything regardless of what it is, even if it goes against our principles and values. Even if it goes against the values and principles of majority of the people in this country. Yet yeah, because mainstream media and a few loud mouth people want to say otherwise, everybody else has to fall in line. But we Muslims will not compromise on our values. Other people may have compromised on their values, on their faith, on their beliefs. But we in Islam will not compromise on our values and our beliefs. And this is because in the, the reality of the matter is, as we've always said, that as Allah said in the Quran 1,400 years ago, and that is valid every single day. The reality is, brothers, that they want to extinguish. They want to put out this light of Allah, Jalla wa'ala. The one that is guiding people's hearts. The one that is bringing people to the right way. The one that is helping people in all aspects of their life. They seek so hard to extinguish this light. But Allah refuses that his light be put out. And rather Allah will perfect his light even if the disbelievers dislike it and have hatred towards it. And so this is why Al-Islam has come for the betterment of mankind, for the betterment of society, for the betterment of everyone, not just for a group of people. And know, O oh Muslimin, that you are being targeted for your religion. You are being targeted because of your beliefs and what you stand for. And that you are not willing to compromise. As Allah says in the Quran, Many of the people of the book, not all of them, but many of the people of the book and the scriptures, they wish that you Muslims, you believers, you would turn back on your religion and you would turn to disbelieve. Why? Because of the envy in their hearts, the jealousy that they have for your deen, for your religion. They don't like the fact that we can stand together shoulder to shoulder, ankle to ankle and have no racism with us. They don't like the fact that we can stand a black man with a white man and every single different aspects of walks of life, what tongue you speak, we don't really care what it is. We can stand together in unity and have no problems together. Hundreds and thousands and sometimes even millions of us can stand together and they are envious of this because they can't bring anything else. Allah is the one who can unite the hearts. This is what they're jealous of. This is what they wish for you to turn back. So don't be a fool and turn your back from this ni'mah that Allah has blessed you with. Why are we, and why, what happens, by the way, with this ayah when Allah mentioned this? Even though we are aware of the hatred that they have in their hearts and the envy that they have, these people who are, who are these Islamophobes, does Allah command us with that which they claim about us? Does Allah say, once you notice they have this hatred in their hearts for you, start to attack them and kill them? Is that what Allah commands us? Rather Allah says, فَعْفُوا وَصْفَحُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ Pardon and bear with them. Turn a new page with them. Until Allah brings His decision and Allah is able to do everything. Allah is able to do everything. Allah is able to change their hearts from being hard like stone to being soft and accepting the truth from Allah Jalla wa'ala. So Allah commands us as believers to be patient, to be good, to be kind with them. And rather Allah commands us to be kind and respectful and to have qist with who? With those people who do not want to harm us. With those people our, who, who we meet, our neighbors, our colleagues, those people that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. Allah commands that we be kind and just and we be respectful towards them and that we do not try to harm them. And rather we have these Islamophobes and these warmongers those that want to see bloodshed and evil. That's what they want to see. They want to see everything that is happening so that they can prove their barbaric image of an Islam that they share with the likes of ISIS, not us. We don't have this portrayal of Islam. They are the ones that have it. They have something in common with these ISIS and these Qaeda types and these Khawarij. They have something in common that they believe that Islam, Islam is barbaric, whereas we are the ones that believe that Islam has the true justice for all of humanity. And that's why you will see that they rush, as we saw this week, the horrible and terrific, uh, terrible incident of a young foolish youth, ignorant and foolish youth, that went and tried to stab, or stab rather a bishop in Sydney, in Australia. And, and this is something that they rush to spread and say, look at this terrorist act. And they know that we Muslims will come out every time and condemn it. We, they know that we as Muslims, we don't stand for this nonsense. It's not part of our religion. It is far from our deen to do acts like this. We don't believe in things like this. Rasulullah when he would send out the commanders for war, for fighting, 
he would say, make sure you don't kill a woman or a child or an elderly, or that you don't attack the places of worship, or that you don't attack the priests and the rabbis. Rasul commanded this in war. So how about when you're at peace? And Rasul said that the one who kills a non-Muslim, non-combatant, then he will not even smell the fragrance of Jannah. And yet these people think that they can try to teach us about our religion. And they want to portray our, our religion in the most abominable way possible. So this ignorant, this ignorant youth that went and, and committed this, ter this ter terrible act, perhaps groomed by some of these dogs from the hellfire. And that's what they are. When he went and he stabbed this bishop in the church, what did he do? Nothing but damaging our efforts to portray the true image of Islam. Nothing but damaging our efforts of what we're trying to show, the hypocrisy of the world when it comes to the lives of Muslims and how they, are, they have one rule for them and one rule for us. Yes, we have our disagreements with the, with the Jews and the Christians and the people of the book and, and, the, and the polytheists and those people who disbelieve in Allah. But look at again how Allah commands to, us to deal with them. Allah doesn't go to, say, go to the places of worship and attack them like how this fool went and did that. Well, Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا تُجَادِلُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِهِ أَحْسَنٍ and do not argue with the people of the book except through a graceful and respectful manner. Be respectful with them. Don't go and start cursing their religion or cursing their gods. Allah commands us with this so that they can listen to the message of Islam and that perhaps they can be guided. <laughs> except for those who act wrongfully with us, those who want to attack and oppress us, then we will not stand for that. And as many of you may have seen, but mainstream media didn't want to publish it. They didn't want to write an article about it. They were quick to write about articles whenever it shows Islam being in a negative image. But they didn't say anything about that young man who when they had an assailant coming down here in the UK, an assailant came hurling abuse at Muslim women, trying to be violent with the Muslim community. And we've seen that Muslim man come and he subdued him, put him to sleep. What did he do straight after? He tried to put him in a, in a recovery position because this is how Islam shows us وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا that we don't transgress the limits. Yes, this man was trying to attack the Muslims. Yes, this man was being violent. Yet look at how after he had subdued him and stopped him from his harm, he was ready to help him up. And he said, don't do something like this again. But you will not find mainstream media. You will not find the Islamophobes showing this image of Islam, which is happening a day in, day out. The, 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 the manners and the akhlaq of the Muslims who try to uh, to try to follow the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is why it is important that we do our part. The believing men and the believing women, they are guardians to one another. We are allies to one another. We strengthen each other. This is what we do. We call the people to good. We call the people to what will help them in this world and in the next. And we forbid them from evil. We stop them from doing things that will harm them in this world and will harm them in the next because we want what's best for society. The Anbiya, the Rusul, they came with something far greater. Your, their parents, the parents of humanity, the, the parents of a person, they will want what's best for them in this world. But the Anbiya and the Rusul, what did they do? They came to look for what will be best for you in the Akhirah, when you, for your eternal life. And so what does Allah say? وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ وَيُطِيعُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهِ The believing men and the believing women, this is what we need to do. Don't let them stop you from establishing your salah and from giving your zakah and for obeying Allah and His Messenger. Don't be disheartened, dear Muslim, by their efforts to extinguish Islam and continue to call to the way of Allah with wisdom and good manners. Continue to show the unity of Islam and the Muslims. Continue to call towards good and forbid the evil and continue to establish your salah. Don't let anybody stand in front of you and your salah. And I want to finish off with what Allah said in the Quran, وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِهِ هُوَ اجْتَبَاكُمْ وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ Strive for the cause of Allah Jalla wa ala. Strive in the way of Allah Jalla wa ala as Allah deserves, Allah deserves that from you. And that it is He, Allah, who has chosen for you and He has laid upon you no hardship in this religion. And this is the religion, مِلَّةَ بِيكُمْ Ibrahim, The religion of our father Abraham, not the religion of, of what they want to call us to, or claim about our religion. Because Allah said, He is the one who has called us Muslims. He is the one who has shown us that this is the true religion. This is the religion that will give humanity the, that will give humanity the best of both worlds. And so our message to the schools across the country, to the rest of the schools across the country, 
in which we understand and we appreciate that many of the schools respect the right of our children that they pray the salah. They respect the right of our children that they are allowed to express their religious beliefs. And we want to extend the olive branch and we want to thank and appreciate them for this. And that they have not taken the line of this school down, in, down south in London that has tried to claim that they are fully uh, liberal and, 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 uh, and, and secular. Whereas, whereas they have bought their secular religion and imposed it on others. Had it been the other way around, you would have seen qamat al-dunya wa lam taqud. The world would have stood up and it wouldn't have sat back down. But we continue to say that our message to the rest of the, uh, the schools in the country, that is decisions like this that further ostracize the Muslim youth. If you want to prevent radicalism and extremism in the Muslim youth, then you would not prevent them from that which gives them the greatest balance in their life, and that is their salah. That is their worship to Allah Jalla wa ala. And you do not want to be duped by these Islamophobes who are so invested in their inherent hate for Islam and they are so blinded by their own fanaticism and extremism that they will go to the extent that they'll try to dehumanize. They'll try to dehumanize the Muslims as we are seeing in, in, in Gaza right now. That they will show you that the Muslims, we treat them differently. We value their lives differently. We will deal with them in a different way. They want to dehumanize us. They want to further ostracize our youth. And we are making the efforts to do the opposite. So those people who are just from the non-Muslims, they will see this for themselves. They will be able to open their eyes and see the reality of what is happening. My last and final message to Muslim parents that send your children, you send your children to such schools like this. I just have a question for you, Allah. Have you, have the accolades and the qualifications of your child become more important to you than their deen and their religion and their relationship with Allah Jalla wa ala? How can you as a Muslim parent be happy for your child to continue to go to a school where they are unable to fulfill their obligations with Allah Jalla wa ala? What will you answer to Allah Jalla wa ala when Allah said, what did you do when I commanded you? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara That I, that you save yourselves and your families from the fire, the eternal fire in the hereafter. What did you do to help them preserve their deen? What will you answer to Allah Jalla wa ala when you just cared about their qualifications and their accolades in this dunya and you didn't care about their hereafter and what will help them in the akhirah? And what has happened to our honor and dignity as Muslims? That we are willing to compromise all these things and that we are willing to allow for a school to dictate that our child can pray or not pray. What happened to your dignity and your honor and your ghayrah of al-Islam and the ghayrah of your values that which your own parents put you upon. And now your children, just for the, for the sake of the best education, whatever they want to claim that they have, have some honor, have some dignity that these people want to tell you how to live your life. They want to tell you how you bring up your child. Where's your honor? Where's your dignity? You have people that are upon batil and falsehood and they're willing to stand up for their values. Yet you are yeah, yeah, Muslim, yeah, Abdullah, you are a Muslim. Allah has chosen you with the religion of truth. And you are unwilling to stand up and defend yourself, defend your rights, defend your child's right to worship Allah Jalla wa ala. أقول قولي هذا وأصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين وانصر المسلمين يا رب العالمين اللهم وأنج المسلمين المستضعفين اللهم وأنج المسلمين المستضعفين اللهم اطفئ نار الحرب في بلاد المسلمين اللهم اطفئ نار الحرب في بلاد المسلمين وقف المسلمين شر الأشرار وفتنة الكفار وكيد الفجار اللهم كن للمسلمين معينا ومؤيدا ونصيرا اللهم احفظهم يا رب العالمين اللهم منزل الكتاب سريع الحساب هازم الأحزاب اهزم الأحزاب كلها اهزم الأحزاب كلها وزلزل تحت أقدامهم وخالف بين كلمتهم وألقي الرعب في قلوبهم وألقي عليهم رجزك وعذابك اللهم إنا نجعلك في نحورهم ونعوذ بك من شرورهم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين 
وقوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله استووا اعتدلوا الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنب الأشقى الذي يصلى النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت 
وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله